Hey guys, how's it going? Today I am doing some fun containers. So I finally got my hands on some more color and you guys know what a hard winter we had. So seeing some color is just like, it's so amazing. I'm just loving my life right now. So I'm gonna put together a hanging basket first and I'm actually gonna do fewer plants than I normally do. So you guys who have watched us for a while know that I pack my containers out. Um, and this is a 14 inch hanging basket and usually for 12 to 14 inch baskets, it's recommended to do three to five plants. I'm only gonna do four. So usually I would put like five or more plants in here because I try to, like, to sneak an extra one in, but I thought it would be fun because these plants are already like this Superbells, this is a Superbells Blue Moon Punch. It's already got some nice size on it. So I thought I would just do like follow the rules and see how it goes. So I'm gonna grab some soil. I cleaned this out. This was um, a container I used last year and I got it pretty clean. So I'm gonna add some fresh soil. You guys, it's warm today. Like I have sandals on for the very first time this spring. I just, it's a perfect start to April. Nice and sunny out. All right, so I'm gonna start with the Superbells Blue Moon Punch. And when you guys start seeing these um, annuals that I'm talking about today, it's totally fine to plant them. They're actually cold tolerant. They're more cold tolerant than we give them credit for. Usually this time of year, we still are thinking pansies and um, primrose, things like that. But these can actually handle quite cool temperatures and still perform really beautifully. So there's that one. I love the dark blue eye on this one. So pretty. So I'm gonna twirl it around a bit and then I'm gonna do this Super Bell's Holy Moly which this one's got some pretty amazing color. Look at this, it's like a pink, bright pink and bright yellow. Some of the blooms are kind of clear, like they're very distinct coloration and some are a little bit more mottled. I just think it's a really neat plant. And I'm making sure that I'm keeping about an inch lip from the, the top of the soil to the top of the pot. That way when I water, it doesn't mess everything up. If I need to remove some soil, I can do that. All right, so the next one is Super Bell's Pink, which just is just a really bright, clear pink. I really like the color. Look at that. It's got beautiful little flowers on it. Yep, see, I'm gonna add, uh, remove just a little bit of soil. I added just a little bit too much in the beginning, but honestly, I would rather do that than have to add soil in, especially when I'm doing bigger containers. I hate to get cans or even like the little soil scoops. I hate to try to get those in between plants to add more soil, it's kind of a pain. Oh my, you know what I forgot to do, you guys? I forgot to add in my plant food. So I think I can still do that. Uh, for this size of basket, I need to add in about three tablespoons and this will help our plants do really, really well through the season. It's a slow release. I still do fertilize with just normal um, fertilizer, which I can show you in a minute. All right, I'm gonna try to work this in the soil between the plants here. Kind of get it evenly and get it down in the soil here. Also, I'm sorry if you can hear the airplane above me right now. They have been out like crazy today. We've been working out in the greenhouse and I don't know what's going on. Okay, I think that that's mixed in pretty good. I always forget something, I swear. Okay. And then this is a Sensatia Lemon Nemesia. Beautiful, bright yellow blooms, like nothing more springy looking than this right here. All right, so that's it, you guys. That's it for this hanging basket. I think usually I would add a centerpiece because there is like a hole in the middle, but I am truly gonna be hanging this one somewhere where I won't be able to see a centerpiece. And these plants will grow and fill in and it'll be this just nice, massive color. Um, so I don't know. I hope, I hope you guys are proud of me for not using so many plants. It feels weird. Like usually I don't like to see soil after I'm done planting. So now I'm gonna go grab my other container and plant that one up. I think that's gonna be gorgeous. All right, next combo is going in this pot, which I've already put new soil in. I think I actually planted the Aloha combination in this last year. It was a really pretty bright, like bright yellow and bright pinks. I can't remember exactly. It was a really pretty pot though all year, but I think that this blue is really nice for a spring. So I'm only gonna put four plants in this container as well, and I'm going to remember to put this in here first. So we'll start with some Time release fertilizer. Oh look, there's a little scoop in there. That would have been handy. Forgot that there was in there. Okay, so about three tablespoons. And I'm gonna work it in. And then this one, so these plants aren't um, like as far as having a thriller, 
I'm going to be putting in, this is a butterfly marguerite daisy. It's a little bit on the small side right now just because it is early, but they get 18 to 36 inches tall. So when it's in this container and you know a little bit more, I'm hoping like bound for growing space, I hope it stays a little bit more on the small side. I don't know, even if it gets big, it'll be awesome. But it's got these gorgeous yellow flowers. I just think it's gonna be so pretty. And you know, a lot of these things, being cold tolerant is awesome, so you can plant them earlier in the season, but a lot of these things will go all the way through summer and into fall sometimes too. So kind of get a jump start on summer planters. So I'm going to put this one toward the back, and this one has a really nice healthy root system. And you know, it's kind of a common misconception that you need to mess up the roots. A lot of the times, especially with um, annuals, they don't need it. now. I have done some containers, in fact, in our recent video where I planted up my pots by my barn, I got some Arborvita spirals, some North Poles, and they were incredibly, incredibly root bound. And you'll know that, like you won't see any soil. And that's the, the case where they actually need to be broken up a little bit, but this looks really nice. So this one goes toward the back, like that. All right, so on this side, I'm gonna use a bluebird nemesia. It's got gorgeous purple flowers. And I like these because they don't get enormously trailing, um, but it will soften this side quite a bit. Like it'll add a little bit of height, so kind of a filler and then just a tiny bit of a spiller. And then I can't decide. I wonder if I should do Tropical Sunrise in the front and the other Nemesia back here. Maybe. So maybe I'll do this as a, so I'm gonna do the Flirtation Glacier White right back here. That way I kind of break up the Nemesias and have one on each side that and that way since these ones aren't as trailing as like this super bells which just is tropical sunrise and it's probably i don't know i have a hard time like picking a favorite but this one's gorgeous i just think the color that kind of apricot pink mix i just it's so pretty it's got a very fitting name i think but since that one's more trailing i think that'll look really pretty kind of coming and softening um, the front of the pot All right, I didn't have to add or subtract any soil on that one. Got it right. Okay, so again, like I said, the Marguerite a Daisy will get nice and big. It'll be a nice size thriller. And then these ones will come in and kind of be my um, filler. Did I say thriller? Yeah, these ones will be the filler and they will trail a little bit. And then the Super Bells will kind of be my nice draping spiller in this arrangement. But I think it's just beautifully springy, just colorful. I really like it. All right, so now I'm gonna go place them outside. I'm gonna stop and give them a little bit of water first. So this time of year, since it's so cool, we don't have to water all that often. I'll probably check on them every few days and probably end up watering them only maybe twice a week, maybe even once a week for a little while. All right, I think I'm gonna put this one right in here, just tucked into a flower bed. I'm not sure that I'll keep it here, but I think it'll look cute for now. All right, so I hung this hanging basket up with an S hook in this ash tree here. Um, you can usually find these at a garden center. They're really handy for hanging stuff like this and for bird feeders, things like that. But like I said, this basket is hanging high enough to where a centerpiece doesn't really matter that much. So I'm just hoping that these trail down and are full of color. So I had a few more plants on hand that I did not end up using in those containers, but I thought I would show them to you because they are also some examples of some more cold tolerant annuals. So there are things that we can start using earlier on in the season. And I'll start with the blood orange nemesia. Love the color on this one. The orange and the yellow just looks very bright. I think that this is a really great accent in any container. And then we've got the lemon coral, which is one of my faves, you guys. I used a lot of this last year. Look at this like cushiony. I just, it's a beautiful annual. And we saw this one everywhere. We went to, um, was it four star greenhouses? They had hedges, like not hedges, but um, borders with big drifts of this lemon coral sedum and it was absolutely stunning. I'm gonna do that in my garden this year. And then I've got this artist blue, yep, artist blue floss flower. And these are more of a filler slash, I mean, they don't get super tall, eight to 12 inches. So I can't really say that they're exactly a thriller, but a great filler. Um, love the color, just the uniqueness of this annual. I think it's really awesome. And then we've got the Graceful Grasses Toffee Twist Carex. 
I get mixed reactions on this one, you guys. So let me know in the comment section down below what you think of this grass. I, I really am curious to know. I personally love it. I love the darker color, the darker tone. It pairs really well with like a dark hookera or um, like a black cherry super tunia, just like stunning color combination. And I like it because it doesn't get massive and it can take more shade. So this is a good one. And then this one is a purple Chevlis dead nettle or lamium is what I usually call it. Beautiful ground cover. This one's actually hardy. So it's hardy to a zone four, which is negative 30. Um, so this one can take some really cold winters, but it also looks great in containers. It gets these little like hooded flowers with that little hooded purple flower, almost like a monk's hood. Look, I think that this is so pretty, but I think that what I like the most about it is that silvery foliage. So, and also some supertunias or most of them, all of them are more cold tolerant. They can actually take more cold. I mean, if you think about it, they do go into fall really, really well and they can take some light frost and still look really good. So I don't know. I just wanted to encourage you guys, as soon as you start seeing this stuff show up at your garden centers, you can start planting it. I mean, unless you're really, really cold. <laughs> We're zone five. So we get down to negative 20 right now. Like today is beautiful, but we'll still have some days in the high or nights in the high 30s. Um, in that case, I might like cover my plants, um, but we're really quickly here going into the 40s as our low, um, which I'm so excited about. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I felt a little bit ca chaos, like <laughs> I didn't really have a plan. I just thought I just wanna plant some of these things and just get them going because I'm so excited about it. And I did mention fertilizer, I think earlier. This is what I've been using about every third watering. Um, give them a shot of this, which means they get it a little bit less in the spring because we're not watering as much, uh, as much, but they get it a little bit more in the summer when they really need it. Um, most of the really uh, floriferous, like really heavily blooming annuals need a lot more food um, than others. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye. <music>